Hey everybody, Chef Jason, your ace hardware grilling expert. Today, man, I've got one of my favorite things to make on the Big Green Egg. That's right, it is St. Louis style spare rib day on the Big Green Egg. Now, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and go out and get the egg fired up. Then we'll come back in here, talk about ingredients and get our prep done. So let's head out to the egg, let's get cooking. All right, so we went ahead and stirred the ash off the charcoal, refreshed it, and now we are using our egg igniter to go ahead and get the fire started. We are going to bring this up to 200 degrees. At that point, we'll add the convector in, let all of that ceramic heat up, and then get ready for today's cooking temperature. So we'll come back here when we're right at 200 degrees and get things started. We just reached 200 degrees, so we'll go ahead and add our convector in. We've got it in the convector basket, which is part of the expander. Now, we also have uh, two drip trays in there. We have everything clean and ready to go. Important to note, once we add the convector in this extra ceramic, we're now gonna close this, adjust the dampeners, the top and bottom, and uh, drive this up to that 250 degree cooking temperature today. But we wanna give it time to heat up because we just added a lot of extra parts in here. So we'll go ahead and close it, hit the top vent, bottom vent, we'll adjust it to today's cooking temp, 250 degrees. While the big green egg is heating up, let's talk a little bit about our ingredients today. We're gonna start with two racks of St. Louis style spare ribs. We do have a little bit of prep work to do. Don't worry about that, we'll show you that here in a second. Today's binder, which is gonna help the rub stick, my favorite bacon up bacon grease, giving pork a little more pork flavor. Now, speaking of making the rub stick, hey, you know, we have a lot of different rubs and seasonings available at your local Ace. Today, we're gonna use some of our Ace exclusive, whoa there, little sweet, little smoky, lot delicious. Then we are going to glaze these ribs today with that amazing barbecue sauce right there. That's right, boom. Shakalaka. That's going to be uh, that apple habanero, and it is going to make these two together absolutely amazing. So let's dive in, get our prep work done. First thing we need to do on these ribs is go ahead and get that membrane. I always like to use a teaspoon. Now, I'm going to give you my chef advice, uh, maybe life advice. Pick one of your cheap teaspoons. Don't pick a good teaspoon you got from one of those fancy kitchen supply places, or you'll get yelled at. So uh, I'm going to take my cheap teaspoon. I'm going to go right here onto the bone with the handle part and we'll wiggle that down there like that we will pry up just a tiny bit kind of make a handhold if you will then watch this hopefully and you know maybe this will work uh, we'll just peel that membrane right off like that now we have a little bit left so we'll do the same thing here we'll take that spoon we'll go do 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 right on that piece of uh, rib right there and we will get our hand under there and get that peeled off as well so we'll go ahead and get all these peeled then we will get the ribs trimmed we'll show you that here in just a second so we've got the membrane all peeled and I like to go through and just if there's anything stuck to the back that I think is going to kind of hang off, I will get that trimmed as well. Uh, and then I just want to go through and make sure that I don't have any non rib pieces. You can see this is pretty uh, floppy here, right? There's not really uh, much more than about an inch of bone there. So what I will do is I kind of square off the end and then I will save this because this goes great the slow cooker when you want to make some shredded pork so uh and i do ribs enough to have you know a good collection of that so we'll go through and just get this trimmed here and then take a look at it make sure we've got it all ready to go but we want to kind of square it off make it look nice just like that Next thing I do is go through with a paper towel and just get some of that excess moisture off there like so. I kind of want to dry that out just a tiny bit and then we will get in here with the bacon up bacon grease and I'm almost out of this so I'm going to just use my hands and we'll go through and put a light coating on the top side like that and then we'll get in here and hit that with our rub so that the rub sticks. Now, we're going to season both sides of the rib. Why? Because guess what? When you eat, your mouth goes on both sides of the rib. So we will get this all seasoned up, flip it over, show you what we do on the backside. All right, front is done. Let's go ahead and flip that over to the backside. And guess what? Same thing again. We're going to hit it with some of that bacon up to act as that binder. And we're going to season the backside. Like we always say, season as light or as heavy as you prefer. All right, we're sitting right at 250 degrees. Let's go ahead and add both racks of ribs. Now, we're gonna close the uh, big green egg, leave it alone, won't even come back here and check on these for about two hours. 
Here we are right at that two-hour mark. Let's take a check uh, on the ribs. Now, one of the things that's important to remember, we're not spraying these because one of the benefits of the big green egg is the amount of moisture it retains. So we're not going to spray them or wrap them because today we're really looking for ribs that have a little bit of texture. Now, uh, I can still see we have a ways to go because I don't get to see any of what we call the teeth. So I don't see any of the ribs starting to show yet. So we're going to let them go for another hour and a half. We'll check in at the three and a half hour mark where we're going to show you how to take the temperature of these ribs to see how close to being done they are. Time to check on the ribs. Here we are sitting right at the three and a half hour mark. So we're gonna start tracking temperature and we're sitting at about 178 degrees. And I know from my experience that when I get ribs with bark and bite and some texture, right? A little bit of chew. I know that those are done about 198 degrees. So we're sitting at the three and a half hour mark. We're gonna let them go for another half hour. Check them in uh, again at the four hour mark see if we're close to ready and time to sauce them. Here we are right at that four hour mark. I'm gonna track temp. We're at 189 degrees, so we are really good at the four hour mark. So guess what we're gonna do? Time for a little boom shakalaka. So I'm gonna hit a first little bit on each rack like that, and then we will go ahead and get the basting brush on there and get these glazed up nicely. So I'm thinking we probably only have about 15 more minutes on these ribs. So we should be pretty close to that four and a half hour mark, but I'm gonna hit this uh, first coat of sauce. Well, look at that right there. Four hours and 15 minutes in, we are done. Temperature finished right at about 198 degrees. Very wonderful. Can see a little bit of those bones. Time to get them off. Head into the kitchen for the reveal. Well, that right there is a uh, pile of happiness. They came out juicy, delicious, and I'll tell you what, boom. Not mad at that sauce at all. Now, about four hours and 15 minutes cook time, which is great. Happened a little bit faster than I anticipated, but I'll tell you what, it's a testament to the big green egg because one of the great things about it is it really retains that much more moisture. We didn't spray them. We didn't wrap them. They cooked a little bit faster. They're juicy and delicious. Not bad at all. Now, speaking of juicy and delicious, if you're looking for another amazing big green egg video, stay tuned because coming up, I'm going to show you how to braise some short ribs after I uh, get after that guy right there. Cheers.